is 12.2, making inferences from random samples. It's the summary sign. So an inference is just like an analyzing it. Taking that sample and then applying it to the population at large. Remember, a sample is a small portion of a population. Uh, so if the sample is large enough, you can make good inferences. Remember, if the sample is too small, the inference is going to get tough. So uh, even though we're going to deal with uh, very small things in real life, I'd be careful analyzing any data that was so small. So once you have it, um, we can do a dot plot. So like you can do a bunch of different things. Here we're going to do dot plots. We're going to do box plots because they're simple. But in reality, you could do all kinds of other samples. You could do a, a circle graph or a bar chart or a, a line graph. You can do almost anything and use it for inferences. Okay. So here they said, hey, we got this dot plot, um, tire blowouts, and 400 motorcycles road race, random sample, 20 motorcycles, hold the population home. So you can see they've got their median, their mode, and it all pretty much lands out right here. Um, which is fine it works out pretty good okay. all right let's look at our examples and we don't necessarily have to plots so we can do this and this is basically we're comparing we're making a proportion or a percentage so in a random sample three or four hundred computer chips were despect defective based on the sample how many chips out of a hundred thousand we expect to be defective so here this is really just a proportion three of four hundred was defective so how many of 100,000 would be defective? So to get this, uh, we can do a couple. We're just going to do it this way. We're going to figure out how many times you'd have to multiply 400 to get 100,000. So I'm going to go over here. I'm going to use this little space over here, happy space here. And I'm going to divide 100,000 by 400. Now, I can do a little math trick here and get rid of zeros at the end of each. So I'm, I'm dividing 1,000 by 4. I just simplified. So 4 goes into 10 2 times. That's 8. We get 20. We bring down that 0. We get 20. 4 goes into 25 times. And that's 0. So all we got to do is bring up. So out of 100,000 chips, it's saying that 250 would be bad. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's incorrect. 400 times 250 equals 100,000. So 3 times 250 equals x, or x equals 750. So I have 100,000 chips. I've got a random 2 here for some reason. That's weird. Out of 100,000 chips, I can expect 750 of them to be bad. OK, in a sample of 5 of 800 t-shirts, were defective. So five out of the 800 t-shirts were defective. Based on this, if a production run of 250 t-shirts, how many would you expect to be defective? So again, I make my ratio. Now this one, I happen to know I can simplify this because five will go into both these. So I am definitely going to simplify it to one and divide 800 by five. Uh, that goes once, six. Oh, I'll do it over here for those. So I'm dividing 800. My <coughs> Excuse me, by five, it goes in once. That's three. I bring down the zero. The zero. Five goes into 30, 60, six times, and that gives zero. So I got 160. So one over 160, and I want that to equal now something over 250,000. So again, to solve this, I'm going to do the math for this. I'm going to go over and use this big sp spot of paper over here. So I'm dividing 160 into 250,000, so 250 to 3,000, and 160. Again, little trick, I get rid of zeros at both ends, because I'm basically I'm dividing by 10. How many times does 16 go into 25? Well, that's pretty easy. It goes once, 16. So that gives me 90. How many times does 16 go into 90? I really don't know, but I can, I can figure it out. Um, so I happen to know that six, um, six times two, or 16 times 2 is 32. And I know that won't go four times. So I'm going to try, first of all, I'm going to try with 16 times 4. So 
So that's 24, carry 2, that's 64. I think I can go another 16. That 0, carry the 1, that is 80. And I know it'll go in there 80 times. I don't know if I had 16 more, it'll be problematic. So that was 5. That brings down, so 100. Now I had the 80, so I know once one more 16 is 96. And that's 6. 96 will go into this. So 6. That leaves me 4. Okay, I've got to keep these lined up. So 40. So 16 will go into 40 twice. It'll become 32. Now, how many times is a whole number? So I definitely have to go out to one decimal place in this case, but one is fine. So that gives me 8, and I got 0. Well, I know that 80 is 5, so that's 0.5. Um, we can't have half a t-shirt defective, so this is going to cause this, because it's 5 or greater, it's going to cause this to round up by 1. So that would be, I could expect 1,561 t-shirts out of 250,000 to be defective. I hope that helps. I'm sorry that people are being so loud in the hallway.